Greetings, everyone. We're going to talk now uh, about chapter four in our assembly language course. And this chapter deals, uh, we dealt a lot with syntax in the previous chapter. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to talk a lot about, in detail, about data transfer. That is, how do we add, subtract, how do we get data from one place to another using assembly code? First thing we're going to talk about is operand types. If you remember, operands are when we submit an action uh, directed, the operands are the arguments, basically. We can have input operands or output operands. We have three operand types. We have the immediate, we have register, and we have memory. Immediate is essentially a constant. So like if we want to add the number pi, uh, and we're using that, we reference a number, it's not a variable, it can't change. Uh, that is an immediate. The register is the name of a register, and we've seen this a lot when we're moving data in and out of different memory, lo uh, memory locations or registers. EAX, for example, in 32-bit, RAX in 64-bit would be examples of registers. And then finally we have memory, a location in memory <clears throat> and that is typically used when we would define variables. Um, when we define the variable uh, x and we define it as a byte and we give it a certain number val numeric value, that's an example of a memory operand. So again, uh, of the variety of different kinds of operands, we got memory operands. This is a direct memory operand. And this is essentially what we would be familiar with in higher level languages as, as referencing a variable. Um, a named reference or a label um, is given to a particular location in memory. And that essentially is a direct memory operand. Next we have our ubiquitous move instruction. And this essentially moves it's called a data transfer instruction, and we use it in every program. In fact, the add to program that you guys used as kind of your introductory program used move in addition to add. Uh, it basically moves information from the source to the destination. The destination is the first operand, and the source is the second operand. So there's a few constraints. You can't move memory. You cannot move from one memory operand to another. You can essentially do anything else. You can move register to register, memory to register, register to memory, memory to immediate, and register to immediate, but you can't move memory to memory. If you want to do a memory to memory, you have to actually move one of the memory values into a register and then move it from the register into a second memory value. So you actually have to take two steps to do that. There's a few places that can't be the destination. Your instruction pointer is one. Um, <clears throat> and so you can see we've, we've, we've done this, looked at a couple of these, but we've got six examples down here. Um, we have moving the count variable, which is a byte, which is 8 bits, uh, and its value is 100. We're moving that into the BL register, which if you go back to page uh, 39 in your book, that gives you a quick summary of the different registers that uh, we reference quite a bit. There's a place, couple places in your book where you'll probably want to go back and read over and over again. This is one of them, page 39. It, talks about the different registers. The BL is your B low register, so it's 8-bit. So that one works. We're moving a value uh, stored in count. It's 8-bit to another 8-bit uh, register location. That, that's fine. In our second example, we're moving WVAL, which is a word, which is 16-bit. Its value is 2. And we're moving it to the AX, which is uh, half of the EAX register. And that is also 16 bits. So we're moving from 16 bit to 16 bit, so that works just fine. Third example, we've got 
we are moving from a the A low register, whatever's contained in there, into count. So we're moving from a register to a memory location. And since those have the same uh, size, it works. Now just to contrast that, we can see three examples here that show an error. We're trying in the first example there to remove wval, which is a 16-bit size value into the al register, which is an 8-bit. So that's going to throw an error because the memory size, the size uh, of the two are different. The operands cannot, uh, must be of the same size. So 8 can't go to 16, or 16 can't go to 8. Next, we've got the opposite. We have an 8-bit value count trying to go to AX, which is 16. So that's going to throw an error. And then finally, we have count, which is an 8-bit, going to a 30, the entire 32-bit register, which is also going to throw an error. So move is a powerful assembly code tool, but it's got limitations. So because of those limitations, we are going to look now into a bunch of other functions that we have, instructions that allow us to get around this. First one is zero extension. When you copy a smaller value into a larger one, the move ZX essentially fills the upper half of the destination with zeros. So for example, we have uh, a binary number. It's 8 bits. You can see it in the example there, 10001111, zero, 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 one, 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 and B means it's binary. We are moving it into BL, which is the 8-bit registry location. Okay. Um, that essentially, and then if we were to also set the upper part of that register to zero, we'd have to do two things there, not just one. So we would have to set the upper part of the register to zero or the entire register to zero and then do the move. But instead of doing two or three different instructions to accomplish that, the zero extension allows us to just write one line. So move ZX allows us to move the value uh, that we have in BL into the AX register, and it essentially sets the upper part, uh, the AH portion of the AX register, to zero. The sign extension is similar to the zero extension, except that the zero extension forces the upper part of the register to be zero. The sign extension is essentially the same scenario as we just listed, except the sign of whatever we're moving is placed into the upper register. If the sign is zero, the upper register gets zero. If the sign is one, the upper register gets all ones. So it takes whatever sign of, that we're putting in to the register and places that, whereas the zero extension forces it to be zero. Next we have the exchange instruction. Exchange has the same basic parameters or requirements as the move instruction, and it, as its name implies, exchanges the values of two operands. One difference is though you can't use immediate. So it and and one of the operands has to be a register. So you can go register to register, register to memory, or memory to register. Uh, similar to the move instruction the two operands have to have the same memory allocation. So in our first example there, B A X comma B X is essentially exchanging the values between the A X register and the B X register, and there, it works because they're both 16-bit. Second one is similar between two 8-bit registers. In the third example, we have the exchange of a memory uh, of a ret of a register value bx with a memory and then and it works because they uh, are both 16-bit because word as it's defined in our data section is 16-bit uh, and then finally there we have the exchange between two 32-bit registers at the bottom you can see an error there because we must have a register as one of the two operands in order to use the exchange instruction Next, we're going to talk about direct offset operands. You might recall that we discussed arrays 
we can have arrays of all the different data types. And they're essentially defined by comma delimited lists. You can see in our example here, we've got an array, a byte array of four different hexadecimal numbers, one zero, two zero, three zero, and four zero. So in order to access different elements of the array, we reference the array either with no offset or with one, two, or three offset. So if we reference the array directly, just by array B, we are going to get the value of 10H, which is our first element of the array. If we reference it with array B plus one, as you can see in the first example there, we are going to get the second element of the array. And there's an alternative notation where we essentially put the value in brackets. And that essentially tells us that we are grabbing, we are taking what's at that memory location and we are going to return the value inside the memory location. It's called uh, an effective address. <clears throat> and the question below, why doesn't array B plus one produce 11H? It's because we're not adding that would be done with the add instruction, but instead we are grabbing the value of the array B memory location and we are adding one byte to it. So we are grabbing the value of the second portion of the array. Um, similar strategy with word, which is 16 bit and D word, or excuse me, word, which is eight bit. No, no, word, which is 16-bit, and D-word, which is 32-bit. <clears throat> um, but since the number we're adding is bytes, we are going to have to, instead of adding one byte, like we did for the first example, for word, we're going to have to add two. And for D-word, we're going to have to add four. So we have our word array, which is 1,000H, 2,000H, 3,000H. We have our D word array, which is one, two, three, four. If we want to access the second element of the word array, we're going to do array W plus two. That may be a little confusing because you'd think, oh, well, it's plus, it's plus one like before, but we need, because word is 16 bytes instead of eight bytes, we have to go to over two blocks of memory, not just one. And with the double word, we have to go over four blocks of memory. Finally, on the bottom, we have a couple of examples that are going to cause problems. When we subtract two bytes, we are actually going to go into a memory location where that array does not exist, and it's going to return whatever happens to be there. So that is a problem. In the last example, adding 16 to our double array, we actually we want to go 4, 8, and 12. Going 4 up is going to give us the two, going eight up is gonna give us the three, going 12 up is gonna give us the four. If we go 16 up, we've now gone outside the array and it's gonna return a random value uh, that is not, not logical. So we gotta be careful of those errors. So next we've moved on to section 4.2 in your book, addition and subtraction. We're gonna start with ink and deck which stand for increment and decrement. Ink is going to add one to the destination. Deck is going to decrease one. Got a couple examples here. We have a uh, my word and a my D word. So inking the my word adds one, it goes from 1000 to 1001. Decking the my word, which was at 1001, takes it back to 1000. Inking my D word takes it from one with seven zeros to a one at the end, adding one. And then finally, we've got moving AX. We're moving the hexadecimal value 00FF. When we increment it, it goes to one zero zero since it moves over one. And then another example, moving AX, same number back to the AX register. Uh, incrementing just the AAL takes us to zero, 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 because it goes from FF to zero, zero. We'll continue in the next section with chapter 
more from uh, chapter 